Hey, super learners. Um, today we're going to keep talking about our names. Um, and this story is kind of cool. I didn't understand it at first until I read it, um, but it was a cool story. And this is the name jar. So I wonder what's going to happen in the name jar. And it is written and illustrated by Yang Suk Choi. The name jar. Through the school bus window, Yun Hei looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day, and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. That's another country. Her grandmother had wiped away Yoon Hae's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name? Yoon Hae had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. So Yoon Hae and her family are from Korea. And in Korea, instead of letters for our names like A, B, C, D, they have different um, symbols or characters for how they spell their names. It's pretty cool. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Yoon Hae, surprising her. Yoon Hae looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it's mine, Yoon Hae answered, quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Yoon Hae, said Yoon Hae. Oh, nay, the girl asked, scrunching up her face. Ooh, 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 nay, some kids chanted. No, no, Unhe corrected. It's spelled U N H E I. It's pronounced Yun He. And she did it in a very polite way. Oh, it's you hey, the boy said, like you, hey. What about hey you? Just then, the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. Yoon Hae hurried to get off. Yoon Hae, bye bye, the kids yelled as she left. Yoon Hae felt herself, her, felt herself blush. We talked about blush yesterday when our cheeks get a little red and we're embarrassed. Yoon Hae stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? Asked a curly haired boy with lots of dots on his face. These are called freckles. You're the new girl, right? He asked cheerfully. Yoon Hae nodded and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Kokotos, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kokotos thanked him and greeted Yoon Hae. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Yoon Hae smiled broadly, means really big, and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Yoon Hae pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Koktos showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. Hmm. 
On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Yunhei kept thinking about her name. How was school, Yunhei? Her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Yunhei simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandmother, grandma. I'm glad you were learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you are a good Korean. I will, replied Yunhei. But, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Yunhei is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Yunhei complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Yunhei, her mother said. That's a good thing. Yunhei just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Yunhei and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed Fadil's Falafel, Tony's Pizza, and Dot's Deli. A big graffiti painted garage garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's Market. The sign was in both English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, Korean style spicy pickled cabbage, and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, Yunhei's favorite, for soup. It made Yunhei smile. Just because we've moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. It's super yummy. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Yunhei. Helping your mother with the shopping, he asked. Yunhei nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said. And what is your name? Yunhei, she answered. Ah, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? Yunhei nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Yunhei. That evening, Yunhei stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Mm, maybe not, her, smiled, her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. Hi, my name is Susie, she said to the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. I think she was trying to say, hi, my name is Susie. <laughs> but it's hard to understand when you're trying to talk and brush your teeth at the same time. Better just to brush your teeth and then talk. The next morning, when Yoon-hae arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Yoon-hae took one out and read it aloud. Daisy, that's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want, said Cindy, who sat next to her. Yoon-hae took out the rest of the paper. Tamala, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. Yunhei nodded and unfolded another piece of paper. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help. A smile spread over Yunhei's face. Ralph quickly said, we'll put more names in 
you can pick whatever you like or pick them all and you'll have the longest name in history. Maybe has, she has some new options, some new choices. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the day, the school day. Yunhei looked out the window and saw it sprinkling just a little bit of rain. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. Yunhei turned around to see the curly haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said, and you? Don't you have any name? Yunhei thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. So she's using a stamp that her grandmother gave her. This is my name stamp. She said, my grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey and he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. So remember, they don't have letters, they have characters or symbols and it's showing up really bright on the white paper. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Yunhei said. And then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. We'll get to use stamps this year too. <laughs> Every day, the jar got fuller with more names and Yoon Hae read them all. She found a few names she liked. Miranda, Stella, Avery. They sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snack time. I've put in three more, said Ralph. Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should choose, you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name that she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. Everyone thought about this. Did you get to pick your name? I didn't get to pick my name. Hmm. When Yoon Hae got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, to my Yoon Hae, I hope you are enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here, the moon is up, but there, the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are, and no matter how different America is from Korea, you'll always be my Yunhe, your grandma forever. Yunhe took out her wooden stamp and filled a paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. If you look very closely, I'm gonna zoom in as much as I can. That's the letter that her grandmother wrote her. But does it look like any words that we recognize? No, it's using those symbols or characters that we were talking about that they use in Korea. And if you look at a map or a globe, globe would be better, on the other side of the world is Korea. So we would be like on this side of the page and then Korea would be all the way over here. So when the moon is up in Korea, the sun is up in America. Pretty cool. On Saturday, Yoonhae walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. 
Hi, Yoonhae. Hello, Mr. Kim, Yoonhae replied. She felt as if she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer turning around. It was Joey. Your, no your name is Un He? He asked her with his eyes open wide. Yoonhae looked quickly at Mr. Kim, then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Yoonhae. And it means grace, Mr. Kim added. Yoonhae. Joey said slowly and this time perfectly. It made Yoonhae smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, Yoonhae, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. What is Joey doing at the Korean store? Hmm, what do you think? Maybe. Maybe he's buying some food. Okay. Good stuff. Let's find out. On Monday, Yoonhae came to class early to look at the names one last time. But the jar wasn't on her desk. Instead, there was just a single piece of paper. Paper with a name on it. Yoonhae slipped it in her pocket. Where's your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Yoonhae said. It wasn't on Mr. Kokotos's desk or on any other desk, and it wasn't on the counters or any of the shelves. Where could it be? As other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon, Mr. Kokotos came in and Ralph shouted at him, the name jar is gone, the jar with all the names in it. Gone? Mr. Kokotos replied. With a look of concern, he asked Yoonhae, did you get a chance to read all the names? Yoonhae nodded. She took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. I wonder which name she picked. See, there was Laura and Amanda and Wednesday and Stella. Hmm, I wonder which one. What do you think? Ooh, let's see. Yoonhae wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I liked the beautiful names and funny names you thought of for me, she told the class. But I realized that I liked my name best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Yoonhae means grace. Grace! Grace! In high! shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. In high! Yoonhae said her name again slowly and clearly. Soon, the kids began to say it better even Mr. Kokotos. They applauded Yoonhae's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Yoonhae. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokotos reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Yoonhae heard her new friends say goodbye. Bye Yoonhae, see you tomorrow. Goodbye Yoonhae. Yoonhae said goodbye and then looked around for Joey but he was already gone. Did you think she was gonna pick her own name? I didn't know either. That's pretty cool, huh? Yoonhae, Yoonhae, come downstairs, mother called up to Yoonhae. Your friend is here. Yoonhae rushed down to see who she met. There stood Joey. And in his arms was the name jar. <gasps> Joey had it. Where did you find it? Asked Yunhe breathlessly because she ran down the stairs. Joey looked embarrassed. 
Um, well, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name. And you did. He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? He asked. Thank you. I'll keep them as a souvenir, Yunhei said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Yunhei. I've already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. That's why he was at the store. He was asking Mr. Kim to help him find a Korean nickname. Hmm. Carefully, he pulled a small silver felt pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. Chinku, read Eunhei, that means friend. And Chinku smiled back. So Joey's nickname in Korean is friend, Chinku. That was pretty cool. And that was the name jar. So sometimes our names might be different from each other, but they each are special to us and to our families. So I hope you have a great day. See you soon.